want the little record button to show up. Still not showing up. It's exhausting this computer. Exhausting. Oh yeah, we need to start this out actually. I shouldn't. There we go, not started. All right, so we're going to talk about um, electrolytic cells. And I should run through stuff before I show you that video, actually. Okay, so <clears throat> things that you need to know. Electrochemistry, exchange of chemical and electrical energy. Okay, so we can change energy from its forms. Um, you change chemical energy into mechanical energy in your body. Okay, you take chemical energy stored in the glucose in the food you eat, and you change it to um, mechanical energy. We can also do that with electrical energy. We talked earlier this year about oil rig. Oxidation is lost, reduction is gain. And we're talking about gain or loss of electrons. And that's important for what we're going to be talking about later on. Um, you guys should be comfortable with that. Um, the other people use Leo goes Gur, so you might be Leo goes Gur people. I don't know. I'm an oil rig kind of gal, so it's it's just what I remember. Oxidation then is going to be a loss of electrons. If we lose electrons, we increase charge. Reduction is the gain of electrons. If we um, go through reduction, we're going to reduce the charge. Oxidation number, you guys are uh, comfortable with that, I think, right? How many electrons or protons or electrons we gain or lose? All right, Oxida oxidizing agent. It's the species that is reduced. So it's an oxidizing agent. It's reduced, which causes oxidation. This is where people get confused, and it's easy. I cannot think of this myself. I always have a problem with this one. The oxidizing agent is actually the thing that's reduced. And the reducing agent is the thing that's oxidized. And I think that's confusing and I don't like it, but there's nothing I can do about it. All right. <clears throat> Electrochemistry involves two main types of processes. Process one is a galvanic cell. This is a voltaic cell. Spontaneous chemical reactions occur here. This is your car battery. This is your battery in your flashlights, batteries in your cell phone, okay? And then there's electrolytic cells, which are non-spontaneous. They require an external electron source, okay? Like when you charge the battery in your computer, like I was talking about, you have that, that power supply that you have on there. Both of these are going to fit in and they're classified as electrochemical cells. And we're going to talk about the chemistry behind these um, coming up. We're going to spend the majority of our time on galvanic cells. And we'll pick up probably Wednesday, maybe, on the other type. Okay. We are very close to being done with the curriculum for this. And I mean, very stinking close. So, um, like, I can almost taste it, which is good. Yay. I think on uh, nine, a lot. How many does it go to there? Nine? Um, ten. Ten. So, yeah. So, you have, I think this is through nine, eight. So, we have two more after this lecture. So, are you tasting it? I'm tasting it. It's tasty. All right. <clears throat> Parts of the voltaic or galvanic cell. The first part we're going to talk about is the anode. <clears throat> the anode is where oxidation is going to occur. Okay. The anode may appear to become smaller. It will become smaller, actually, as it falls into solution. And we'll talk about that. Okay. So, um, they talk about this, and will this let me write? It probably won't. It's been mean to me. I don't know why it won't let me write on here anymore. You have to click on the pen thing. 
but it's just a highlighter. See, it just highlights, <clears throat> which is really kind of annoying. Okay, I know how to do this. There we go. All right. So anode oxidation. So they say anox. And then this is the cathode. This cathode gets bigger over time. And then fat cat. Because this is going to get bigger and this is going to get smaller. So an ox and a fat cat. Anode is the oxidation. And then cathode is going to be where your reduction takes place. Okay, and it's going to get fat. It's going to get big. Um, you can also remember that these are both vowels and these are both consonants. So sometimes people will do that as well. Okay, so that's an electrode. This is typically a piece of metal, although it can sometimes be graphite um, occasionally. You can have um, like platinum in there or graphite that's getting reduced. Sometimes they'll even have a gas in there. Those are pretty rare. Um, but typically you're going to have some sort of metal that's going to be involved in these. You also need something called a salt bridge. The salt bridge will then is then a device that's going to maintain electro neutrality. Typically, They'll have some sort of auger. Have you ever dealt with auger? It's almost like a jello. If you've ever done anything in like um, microbiology where they have the petri dish with the auger that you have to put the stuff on. Have you seen that before? Or maybe you've seen like a petri dish like in. Um, I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't know. Yeah, So you'll see like Petri dishes here, and then they've got this gel stuff at the bottom, and then they'll grow like, uh, uh, you know, bacteria samples, mold, that sort of thing. Um, when I taught bio, we would actually go around the school and collect samples and, and grow those and, and keep these sealed. You know, we keep it sealed, but... Um, yeah, it was interesting. We would like collect them off of like, like kids did like keyboards and cell phones and toilets and, and water fountains and stuff like that. So it was actually kind of interesting, but we would keep them sealed so that, you know, once it was growing the bacteria and stuff, it was sealed in there and we didn't have to worry about it. But so that's, that's auger. So sometimes it'll be in that, but they're going to use something that's neutral salt. So something like um, potassium nitrate would be a good example for this because remember KOH, um, potassium nitrate, the KOH, uh, that's a strong base. So the salt would be uh, potassium. So that would be a neutral salt there. And then um, if we had um, uh, HNO3, okay, so new, that would also be a neutral salt. So when we have our um, KNO3, that's a neutral salt there. Does that make sense why? Remember we talked about neutral salts and acidic salts and basic salts and all that stuff. All right, so that's going to maintain our electrical neutrality. And we'll talk about how we're going to build one of these in a few minutes. All right. The electron flow is always from the anode to the cathode, and it's through a wire. So you'll have a wire set up. Sometimes you will run into, and I just mentioned this because of college, they will want you to do a, the standard cell notation. You will not have to do this on the AP exam. But this is your anode, your solution that the anode is placed in, the cathode, solution then the cathode so for example if we had zinc we had zinc 2 plus they would have the molarity of that solution then your copper 2 plus the molarity that the copper's in and then the copper 
And then a voltmeter is what's going to measure the cell potential, usually typically measured in volts. Okay. All right. Let's go back here. So if we are looking at this equation here, they want us to balance this redox reaction. We are not going to balance it in acidic solutions. We never learned to do that. You don't need to do it on the AP exam. If you do it in, you'll, you'll need to do it in college, but um, we just didn't have time this year to get into it. I usually cover it, but, um, but this year, well, COVID. All right, so first of all, we need to figure out which one is our reduction and which one is our oxidization agent and which one is oxidized and which one, which is the re reduction agent. So we're going to look at this equation up here and then we're going to balance it. Okay. So MnO4, we've got to figure out what that's going from. So my oxygen, remember, is a minus two. So minus two times four gives this side a minus eight. The overall charge of this ion is a negative one. See that right here? Okay. So I need this to be a negative one overall charge. So what does my manganese have to be in order for this to have a minus one charge? Plus seven. So this is a plus seven. This is a plus two. So what has happened to the manganese? Well, it's gone from a plus seven charge to a plus two charge. Did it gain electrons to change that charge or did it lose electrons? Okay, so gained. So reduction is gain, right? Oil rig. So this is my reduction. So this is my reduction. I'm going to go from my MN plus seven. How many electrons did it gain to get to MN plus two? Five. Okay. So now we need to figure out what our oxidizing agent is. Well, probably iron since it's the only other one left over here. It has gone from a plus two to a plus three. So what's happened to it? Lost electrons. So oil, this is our oxidizing. It has gone from Fe two plus to Fe three plus, plus one electrons. Now, I need to balance this out. I need to balance my charge here. Hold on, let's do blue. Okay, so here I have five electrons. Here I have one. What do I need to do? I need to multiply this one by five. So I'm going to multiply this by five. He is going to then become 5Fe2+. plus plus five electrons, plus five Fe three plus. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Wait a minute. I have a plus in the wrong spot here. That needs to be an arrow. There. Better. All right. So now what's going to happen? Well, these five electrons and these five electrons are going to cancel out. But right now, you are going to make a note off to the side because this is going to become important. These five electrons are going to become vitally important in the coming days. You're going to write down N equals five electrons. And just keep that off to the side. We're going to come back to that in the coming days. 
it's good for you to start getting in the practice of seeing that. Okay? That's five moles of electrons. <clears throat> All right. So now we're going to write our overall reaction, which is Mn plus 7 plus 5 Fe 2 plus yields Mn plus 2 plus Fe 5 Fe 3 plus. No. Some professors get moody about it. I just use it interchangeably. It doesn't matter for the AP exam. I can tell you that because I have asked that question. Um, <clears throat> I think when I was in college, they made us write it this way. But like your periodic table that you use here, it's written the other way. It, it's just whatever they prefer and how moody your college professor might end up being. That's what I've been told anyway. All right. Good question, though. All right. Does that make sense how we get that guy balanced? Mm -hmm. Now, when you get into college and you take more advanced college chem, they will probably have you balance this in acidic conditions and basic conditions. And that's a bear. It's a long process. And it's painful. So just um, be ready for that possibility. All right, doing okay on time. All right, so. <clears throat> if I try to copy and paste this into Word, I lose some of the formatting and it doesn't work out so well. No, that didn't work out. Let's try this again. If I try to save this as a um, copy. Paste. There we go. Okay. Um, if I try to save this as a... Um, As a Word document, convert it from PDF and export it into Word. It doesn't work too well either. I lose a lot of my formatting and stuff. So this is about as good as I can get it to work right now. I'm sorry. All right. So we're going to place MNO4 and FE2 plus in the same container. If we did that, the electron transfer would be direct. The reactants would collide. You wouldn't get any useful work out of it. You need a wire that those electrons can move across and go from one place to the next. But the problem is, is that if you have that, those electrons are going to end up in here. You also need something here that's a load and you need this salt bridge because you're going to need to be able to um, balance out charge. And I'm going to show you why that is the case here coming up. Okay. Use KNO3 or something that's a neutral salt where you're not going to typically end up getting any kind of precipitation forming. So KNO3 is a good one to use for that. You can measure your cell potential then, which is your electromagnetic force, your pull of electrons as they travel from the anode to the cathode. They, they travel anode to cathode alphabetically, A to C, A, C. It's not alternating current, though, so don't get that in your brain that it's the same thing because it's not. We end up talking about volts, which is a, a measurement of potential energy, electrical potential energy. It is equal to one joule of work per coulomb of charge, and that's actually given to you on your sheet here. So this is on your formula sheet. It's the very, very last thing on your formula sheet. One volt equals one joule per one coulomb. Okay. And then um, the voltmeter is something that's going to measure that electrical potential. 
and some of it does get lost a little bit of a loss to heat resistance the voltmeter typically won't read exact but it'll be close enough and don't worry about that part just if you get into like electrical engineering and stuff they'll talk about it more in there okay but don't get too wigged out about that all right All right, so each half reaction, each half cell here is going to have its own cell potential. And we look those up in a table, which I think is coming up here. Yeah, you can see the next page if you flip. There's a page here and a part of a page here that has a bunch of different um, potentials listed. These potentials, Either you have to be able to calculate, which I'm going to show you how to do um, from data, which we'll get into. Don't worry about it. Or they will give you this these potentials. Okay. No, no, no. There's no way you would. Okay. There's no way that they would expect you to. All right. So don't worry about that at all. Yeah, manage tools. I don't think it'll let me. No, that doesn't. Darn it. I was getting excited there. It might actually let me do that, but it didn't. Okay. Um, so those potentials will be provided for you. Um, each one of those cell potentials is measured against a standard, and that standard typically is hydrogen, okay, where they've taken a piece of inert platinum that's bathed in hydrogen gas at one ATM, and that they've assigned a zero value, okay? I don't know if that's on the chart. Yeah, so hydrogen's right here on this chart. And you can see that that's the dividing line. Above that's positive and below that's negative. Okay, and then over here, again, yep, there's your hydrogen. Anything above it is positive. Anything below it's going to be negative. All right. So that... Um, information and if you look at these tables it's going to say at 25 degrees celsius that is standard conditions so we talked about standard conditions in terms of um delta s and delta g okay those are always at standard conditions um when that when we have this not sign given so delta um when we're when we're looking at these standard potentials uh, e cell prime or E cell not is going to be when they are at standard conditions, which is 25 degrees Celsius. Right here is going to we're going to talk more detail about what's going on in terms of how these things are set up in just a couple minutes. Okay, so this diagram here is what's going to happen. And um, I used to have. Let me see if I've still got it here. I had created a smart board thing where I would, um, no, nope. I, I think it's in here actually. This would have been big idea five. We never got to this last year, so it wouldn't be in there. It's a worksheet. I know I had this. Ah, where did I hide that? I had a smart board presentation where we would actually move the things around for the battery to work. I'm 
sorry. I think it would have been in here. All right, well, I'll just have to draw it out, I guess. Are batteries? No. Hmm. Sorry, didn't mean to waste your time there. All right, so when we are looking at these, we have to be able to figure out which um, material is being oxidized and which material is being reduced, okay? And um, I my notes here. Uh, did I write that down? Okay, so when you're looking at this, when you're looking at the reduction potential chart, whichever value is the highest, okay, the less negative value is going to be where your reduction is taking place. So if we were comparing like 10 here, and zinc, 10 would end up getting reduced and zinc would be oxidized. And you can look at the numbers and be able to quickly tell that. Does that make sense? So whichever one is more positive is reduction, whichever one is more negative is your um, oxidation. Now, when I do these, yep, so here, elements that have the most positive reduction potentials are easily reduced. The ones that have least positive re reduction potentials are easily oxidized. So higher number reduced, lower number oxidized. You can also use this as kind of an activity series. Metals having less positive reduction potentials are more active and will replace metals with more positive potentials. So this kind of explains your activity series as well. All right, so again, here, oh yeah, here it's underlined and, and everything. More positive reduction potential gets to be reduced. If you are trying to set up a cell battery, you use that information. So that's why lithium is such a common thing for batteries really good at yep look at it look at the chart here where's lithium at in the chart and if you go back and look at your activity series from regular chemistry who's at the very top who's your star player lithium All right, and then here you can see it again, lithium's right here. Yeah, that's why your lithium batteries, that, they call those alkali batteries, or not, you have alkaline batteries. The alkaline batteries are going to use something like calcium or um, magnesium in it, and that's why, because they're, you know, way down here at the bottom. They've got really good uh, cell potentials. All right. Um, now, she tells you in these notes to reverse the equation. I don't do that. I don't like this. I don't like to, I don't like what she's done here. Okay. You can do this if you want, but you have to remember to flip the thing around and flip the sign. And that's a pain in the butt. Okay. So you can follow what she's saying to do here. That's completely up to you. I don't do that. Okay, the way I remember it is I always go, I need to just close this document down. Let me get rid of this thing. Keep trying to click on that. When I'm doing this, I always do cathode minus anode. Okay. So what she wants you to do is she wants you to flip the equation around, then remember to flip the sign around too. If you just do cathode minus anode, you get the same result, but you don't have to do all that flipping. 
okay? So she wants us to consider here, um, we're doing a reaction here. She's got us looking at zinc and copper, right? So she's got us looking at zinc and it's going to zinc two plus. Um, this is on the top of page five. Oh, I guess I should have looked at those mnemonic devices with you first. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. I apologize. So let's look at the bottom of page four, okay? Because we skipped all of these charts. We're going to come back and use these charts. I'm going to show you how to use them. But right now, until we get to some point where we can actually work with them, um, they don't do much for us, okay? All right. So um, people remember these. Anox, that's where I said the oxidation occurs at the anode, okay? And then red cat. So red cat. And this is where, if you look at your car battery, your car battery has a black and a red. The red is where the reduction is happening in your car battery. <coughs> and that's why they made it red. The black lead in your car battery is where this oxidation is occurring. And the electrons are going to travel from the black to the red. And so if you reverse those leads and hook it up to a different car, then it's trying to shove the electrons the wrong direction and bad things happen. And I don't know what they are. I just know bad things happen. Okay. So fat cat from anode to cathode. The other thing is, is that your cathode is going to get big. It's going to increase in size, and we'll talk about that coming up. So your cathode is your positive cell in your galvanic cell, okay? It's going to be more positive. It may not always be positive, but it's going to be more positive than your anode, okay? Again, we're going to talk about why we need to balance this charge, and then... Um, we're not going to talk about these electrolytic cells yet. So, all right. So let me cut this so I can draw all over this thing because I'm going to draw like crazy, you guys. All right. Now I want to be on page five. You're going to be on page five with me? Okay. Hold it. All right. So on this, we've got zinc here. And we've got zinc to, uh, to zinc two plus, and we've got copper, and that copper is going to go to two plus. And I know it's going to two plus because I see these little symbols here. That's what she's got drawn on here for us. All right, now let's go back to that table and let's find these guys in that table. Okay, um, copper. Now there's a couple coppers here. Okay. This is copper two going to copper one. See that? We don't want that. We want copper and we've got copper two here. Okay. And that's 0.34. So that guy is going to be 0.34. And then if I go back and I find my zinc, zinc is down here and it's a negative 0.76. Okay. Now they have this drawn on these potentials like this. Okay, and then they have these numbers off to the side. I don't really care that much. Okay, I just need to make sure that I have the right number of oxidation numbers going to and from. Okay, what I want to look at is I want to look at these values. Which number is more positive, copper or zinc? Copper. 
copper. So this guy is more positive. That means that it is going to be reduced and this guy is going to be oxidized. Does that make sense? Now, what she wanted you to do is she wanted you to flip this thing around, flip this sign around, and then add these things together. All right? I don't like that. I don't like doing that. Okay? What I want to do is I do cathode minus anode. Now, which one of these is my cathode, my copper or my zinc? Copper. Okay, remember we talked about cathode reduction. Okay, that is red. Red, copper, remember they are both reduction and cathode. They both start with consonants. Oxidation and anode start with vowels. So I'm going to take my reduction, which is 0.34. I'm going to minus a negative 0.76 from that, and I'm going to get my value here. Okay, so that's my voltage. Seven six point three four zero. Right, ten. No, that would be eleven. Yeah, one point one. So one point one o volts. Okay. Now, how do we draw that? How do we figure out what's going on? So first of all, we know. Now, did you know that this was the anode and this was oxidation from my description or because you cheated and you looked over here? Yeah. All right. So remember fat, cat. Okay. So your anode is where your oxidation is going to occur and your cat is your cathode. So um, what did she have for her acronym for that? She had something for that, didn't she? in the wrong direction apparently oh it's after this isn't it yeah a red yeah red cat reduction occurs at the cathode fat cat from anode to cathode i remember the anode and oxidation that and ox is how i remember it that's mine but there's different ways to remember it it's whatever you are comfortable doing okay now, what we have typically here, okay, is we have a situation where we're going to have, well, not enough time to really get into this. All right, so we'll pick up with that on Monday. Um, and and go from there, so... I want you to do that 9.6 for your homework. Yeah, you can you can do that. The coupled reactions, you should easily be able to. The answer key is online, so there's no reason why you shouldn't. Okay. And you can start working on your final exam. 